seen it will forever be haunted by its presence. Please join me in welcoming stories, fables and ghostly tales as we go on the hunt for Bigfoot. So get comfortable and let the darkness take control. In the 80s, my cousin was on a camping trip with his wife. It wasn't a busy day for camping, and according to my cousin, the ranger told them that they were the only ones camping there that night. Anyway, so it's getting late, and my cousin said he spots something across the lake. He thought it was a bear standing, so he grabs his binoculars. He said it wasn't a bear because it had a face, like a 70-year-old man and the fur was longer than that of a bear. He thought maybe it was someone in a suit. It disappeared quickly, whatever it was. He was spooked, and wanted to leave the park immediately. His wife thought he was being ridiculous, though, and just having an overactive imagination. She had bought a shotgun, and insisted that they would be fine if anything happened. So that night, everything is going fine, until my cousin is awakened by footsteps. His wife is still asleep, but he doesn't want to wake her. He just tries to keep her still and as quiet as possible. A figure approaches the tent. My cousin said he was positioned so that his head was on the corner of the tent. The figure leans down and gently presses its hands around the corner of the tent. So the figure is basically putting its hand around my cousin's head. I don't remember how long he said it lasted, but this figure eventually left. My cousin said it smelt like mechanical things, like someone was working on a car, although he had no car. The next morning, everything at the campsite was untouched. No problems at all. There wasn't any evidence that anyone had been there. He eventually went and researched the area and discovered that the camping area is supposedly a hotspot for Bigfoot and such. He firmly believes that he saw some kind of Sasquatch. We were camping in Sequoia National Forest, and our campground was about as secluded as it gets. Just to reach it, you had to go on a treacherous one-way dirt road, if you could call it that, for over an hour. We arrived in the afternoon to find the campground only had two other inhabitants, the campground host and an older lady with a little dog. We set everything up, cooked some dinner, and settled in to get some rest as the sun went down. Throughout the night, we would be awakened here and there by sounds. Nothing out of the ordinary for camping in the middle of the dense woods, just things like branches snapping and things moving in the trees. Around 11pm, we heard something going through the bolted trash cans around the campground, and there were no bear bins here. Knowing we were in bear country, I beat my car a few times to try and scare off whatever curious creature was digging in there. This happened a few times. Whatever it was, kept coming back. As the night went on, things got more and more strange. A meadow, about a hundred yards from where our tent was, that was populated by a few wild cattle earlier that day was some kind of scene for something terrible going down. We heard the sounds of cows screaming bloody murder, like they were being torn apart. My initial thought was, shit, it's a bear, cougar, or pack of coyotes. Some kind of predator was fucking these cows up. It was obvious they were in great distress. But after that, there was a noise I heard that I've never heard any animal make. It was a loud, deep, howling sound. Almost like a portamento, where it starts off low and rises higher and higher in pitch. It was loud as fuck. I could feel it in my chest vibrating. Needless to say, we were all pretty freaked. It didn't stop there. Along with the sounds of dying cows, we also heard things like massive branches being torn off trees around us. Something knocking against the trees, like with a rock or a stick. And at one point, something big was walking around our camp. When we stuck a flashlight to the window in the tent, something massive went running by our tent, shaking the ground as it ran. 
and it was fast as all hell. Eventually, all this commotion died down, but not before the howl or shriek let out again, this time further away into the woods. Of course, I didn't sleep at all that night. I anxiously waited for the sun to rise before I inspected the campground. Even though we had heard trash being ripped and bottles clanking together, the trash cans were not knocked over, and they were still chained shut, which we thought was odd, because a bear surely would have made more of a mess. We searched for bear or cougar tracks, and the only thing we found was, I shit you not, human looking tracks. Like bare human feet, maybe a little bigger than normal size, not like those huge Bigfoot tracks people have casts of. I will say I am far from a conspiracy theorist, I'm a huge skeptic. The thought of Bigfoot I have always laughed off and made fun of, but this was freaking me out. The older lady who was in the campground next to us, she booked it out of there early in the morning, leaving in a hurry. As the day went on and the prospect of spending another night there, now being the only campus present, became less and less appealing, we packed up quick before the sun got too low and got the fuck out of Dodge. On the way home while discussing what had happened, my girlfriend pulled up various Sasquatch sounds recorded on YouTube. Some were ridiculous, but one, I believe recorded in Ohio, sounded identical to what we heard. Let's just say... I'm a little less skeptical now than I used to be. Okay, so I have a story that happened to me and my friends. To set the scene, we were on a Boy Scout camping slash shooting trip. There are about 30 of us. We were in a little cabin with windows on the front and back, as well as a front and back door and wooden tables all around the area. The adult cabin, with the bathroom, was around an eighth of a mile down a gravel road in the dark. There was obviously a buddy system because it was Boy Scouts. So it's around midnight, and everyone had been telling scary stories, like normal camping trips. I had to go to the bathroom, and ask my friend to come along. He said sure, and we got our knives, and we went to the bathroom, and we began our walk back. This was where it got scary. I felt an instinctual fear. I looked to my friend, and he had the same look as me. We start to walk slightly faster, and unfold our pocket knives. I then turn around and see it. It looked like a cat, but it was around six feet tall and on its hind legs, kinda hunched over. I freaked the heck out and started running. My friend sees it too and we sprint back to the cabin. It began making a moaning slash howling sound, and followed us slowly. We pound on the door, and the guys let us in. We tell them what we saw, and they actually believed us. So we lock the front door, and look at the back door. It had no lock. We push the table up against it, and had a kid sit there with his knife for safety. We drew the blinds on all the windows that had them, and one of them didn't even shut, and we just sat there with all the lights on. Then we see the eyes outside of the window with no blinds. We were all shitting ourselves, and then the thing slowly walked to the back door. We heard bumping against it, but then it left. But we still thought that we were going to die. No one slept. And when the adults came to wake us up, we told them and they laughed and said that we were making it up. Everyone in that cabin know it happened, even if they didn't believe us. It was mental. Last October, I was in California for 11 days, after my brother's wedding in San Diego. Just wanted to drive around the state and visit Californian places that had captured my imagination over the years. And I love driving almost as much as I love cars. Some destinations that I travel to, the Pacific Coast Highway, San Francisco, Bodega Bay where parts of Hitchcock's The Bird was filmed, and this movie scared the hell out of me and my now deceased mother. I also wanted to visit Clipper Mills CA, 
with the longest audio of Bigfoot was captured one night in 2012. I don't necessarily believe in Sasquatch, but would never discount someone else's experience, especially if I wasn't there. So off I went. Clipper Mills is in the foothills of the Sierra Nevadas, about 70 miles northeast of Sacramento, very near the dam that was in danger of failing last year. Pretty remote. So, after Bodega Bay, I head across the state for my destination, arriving near Sacramento in time for a late dinner. So it's after dark when I set out on the final leg. Very dark. It takes me a good while on all the twisty, turny roads to find my way there. I wanted to get to the exact spot the person who posted the above video parked that night. He wouldn't say in his videos, so I poked around YouTube comment sections and related videos and found more or less the spot. Around 11pm, I pulled my rented Camry well off the dark two-lane road to avoid any issues with the very sparse traffic. I saw none whatsoever as I sat in the darkened interior, listening, allowing my eyes to adapt to the dark for about 20 minutes. I heard nothing but assorted insects as I sat there. Saw nothing moving at all. Eventually, not wanting to activate the car's interior lighting, I crawled out of the driver's seat window into the black night, armed with my cell, no service, and handheld GPS to find my way back should I get lost in the dark. And the red flashlight I used with my telescope, I stand there right by the car window for a solid two minutes before I could screw up the courage to move away from the Camry. Eventually, I walk up the road, still not hearing anything but bugs. Suddenly, without conscious decision to do so, I veer right and head up into the woods. My feet are crunching pine needles now, and to my mind, I sound like Bigfoot stomping around myself. After what was about 20 minutes, I stopped to listen, and added to the insects, I hear this faint screeching sound far off in the blackness that doesn't sound insect-like at all. It has more consciousness. The now also thoroughly adapted mind is whispering that it sounds like a person in distress, or a large primate. I remain still. I hear something small, scurrying around in the underbrush as well. Followed a minute later by the same forlorn sounding wail, now closer. Time to return to the car. As I'm walking back to the car, at least I hope, I hear this spooky sound, every 20 to 30 seconds, and now it's coming from behind me and in front of me. Shit! It seems to have a vocabulary of some sort to me now. Different vocalizations, some guttural, some high-pitched, and everywhere in between. My mind is having fun, just fucking with me now. I was never so happy to see a Camry in all my life. I started it up before my ass was in a seat. I think and half expect to see scores of red eyeballs glowering at me in the headlights from the dark forest. Now spooked and my mind telling me some homicidal axe wielding lunatic was nipping at my heels, I went back the way I came at a much quicker pace than I had arrived. Out of nowhere, right in front of me this black lab runs out of the woods on one side of the road and into the woods on the other. I barely missed crushing it. That scared the shit out of me right there. I slowed down a bit, the thought of nearly mowing down an innocent mutt overcoming my mind. Some hour down the road towards Sacramento, when I noticed I had cell service again, I opened my Expedia app and found a nearby hotel for the night. Once safely ensconced in said hotel room, I began scouring the internet on my iPad and came to the conclusion that what I heard was a barred owl or western screech owl can never be 100% sure, I suppose. Very creepy though. I'm done with wandering alone in the woods at night. I think. I lived in rural Massachusetts. To anyone who's familiar, that means miles of wood, with spaced out suburban areas in between. I was walking down my grandfather's logging trail, getting ready for his funeral. I'm also an avid mushroom collector, so I'm always walking, slowly, and staring at the ground. Friends hate me for it. 
So I get to this cool little white capped mushroom and stop to take a close up picture of it. And that's when I heard it. The best way I can describe it as if someone with a lot of flesh on his knuckles was punching a tree. Now I know what deer sound like when they stomp to protect their children. And I know what smashing antlers on trees sounds like. I've heard bears, fisher cats, moose, pretty much any animal in western Massachusetts that exists. So naturally I looked up, freaked the hell out. It was so rhythmic, thud, 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 and went on for minutes at the same pace. So being the curious person that I am, I let out a whistle that couldn't be mistaken for a bird. I'm looking in the direction of the thudding, and can see about 75 to 100 yards through my grandfather's well-trimmed trees, and see nothing. Right after my whistle, I hear a low, quick whistle back. My first thought is, oh it must be some logger arsehole scooping the land past the no trespassing gate. So I yell, hello? Pretty much as loud as I can. Then whatever it was, ran away faster than I've ever heard a human being run. And using my experience with deer and dogs and moose and bears, I assess that it couldn't rationally be a four-legged creature. I know what they sound like running, and this was much closer to something bipedal. I'm 100% positive on that. What doesn't make sense, however, is that a two-legged creature that ran away from me faster than any two-legged creature I'd ever heard before, and it also sounded like it was at least 250 pounds. The steps were loud and frantic. A lot of people believe Bigfoot has a spiritual connection with the forest it remains in, and thus the creatures in it as well. I did not find it a coincidence that this happened on the day of my grandfather's funeral, and I ran all the way home. This happened close to 20 years ago now and still creeps me out, because I have no idea what it was or what exactly happened. I grew up in southern Oklahoma in a small neighborhood of about 15 houses that was surrounded by woods. Any free time I had as a kid I spent in the woods exploring or building tree forts. There were three fields roughly the size of a football field each that were separated by maybe 10 feet of trees, not far into the woods. And that's where I spent most of my time out there. I felt pretty comfortable navigating my way out into areas I hadn't been before and coming back by the time it happened. It was summer, and I had a friend and his little brother over. My friend and I were maybe 10 or 11, and his little brother was maybe 8. We were coming back from a trail I had made that led to our school, when we noticed something moving to our right. We were in the fields furthest away from where the gate back to my neighborhood was, and it was about 5 feet into the trees, no more than 100 feet away from us. It wasn't moving anymore, it was just standing straight up looking at us. It was probably between 6 or 7 feet tall, and was pale white. It almost looked like it was coated in powder, because of how smooth it looked. Its arms reached down to around its knees, but it didn't have any facial features or anything really human-like, other than standing on two legs. We froze when we saw it staring at us for at least a solid minute. Then. We ran, but as we were running through an open field, this thing was keeping up with us in a heavily wooded area without looking where it was going or moving around any trees. It kept its eyes on us the whole time. Its movements looked effortless and like it was gliding just above the ground. We made it to the second field and it was still there stalking us. At this point, we were all running as fast as we could and didn't notice anything else but what was there. We get to the first field and the gate out of the woods, and back into my neighborhood was maybe another 100 feet from it. But when we crossed the line of trees between the first and second field, it disappeared. We still had no intention of slowing down, and only stopped when we reached my front door, only to notice we had left the little brother behind. We immediately started back towards the woods, and were coming up on the gate just as he was coming out. Tears were pouring out. He couldn't talk for at least an hour. When he was finally able to talk again, we asked what happened and he said he had tripped in the second field and got lost 
since it was our first time out there. He said it just stopped dead in its tracks and stared at him, as he was trying to figure out where to go. It didn't move again though, after he got up and started running again. To this day, I still haven't been back out in the woods and have no idea what we saw. I can still see it in my head, matching us step for step, and the way it just stared at us when I think about it. Easily the most terrifying thing that's happened to me to date. About 10 years ago, my family and I were up in the White Mountains of Arizona to cut down our Christmas tree. My dad was driving our truck with my grandpa in the front seat, and my mum and sister in the back seat. I was in the bed of the truck along with our family's German shorthead pointer. We were driving along a forest road, and all of a sudden my dog starts barking and growling. So I look to see what it is, thinking it's a bear or mountain lion. What I saw was a tall, dark figure walking parallel to the road, about 60 to 70 yards away. I yelled at my dad to stop the truck. When I told him I think I see the Bigfoot, he just laughed and continued to drive. When I looked back to get another look, the figure had changed direction and was walking away from the road. The last thing I ever saw was the thing's head disappearing down a hill. To this day, I still do not have any explanation for what I saw. And every time the situation comes up, my dad always makes me tell the story so he can just have a laugh at it. So I often go up to Alaska to visit my grandparents and go fly fishing. It has to be my favorite hobby besides music. Anyways, this one summer when I was about 14, I had an interesting experience. Well, me and my grandfather are hiking down this trail to our favorite fishing spot. It's about an 8 hour walk. We carry in tents, food and fishing gear. When we are about halfway through the walk, we find that in the middle of the trail is what looks like a giant A. Two trees were broken at the stump of either side of the trail and leaned against each other at the tips. These were medium sized bushy pine trees you see all over the mountainsides. So we think nothing of it and pass under it, and keep walking until we finally get to our campsite. When we get there, we find more trees, broken like the ones before. Not just haphazardly, but literally the exact same fucking way. Both me and my grandfather are confused as hell about this, but whatever, it's probably some dumbasses that found this place and, and wanted to scare people. We thought, oh well, people here are just messing with us. Let's get set up. So we do and settle in for the night. I'm in my single person tent and my grandfather is in his a few feet away. I fall asleep pretty quick. Sometime later that night, my grandfather starts shaking me by the shoulder and telling me to wake up. Wake up, kiddo! I crawl out of the tent to look around. It was that time of year that night. It was just perpetual twilight so we could still see pretty well. All of a sudden, I hear this high-pitched scream. If you ever heard a lynx scream, it would have been pretty much dead on, but it had some weird twinge to it. We both wrote it off as such, but I still thought something was off about it as we sat there listening to it. The next morning we got up and started fishing. It was going great. Both me and my grandfather had caught a lot of grayling. We had moved down to where our backs were to this berm that was covered in brush. At the top were these good sized rocks. After about 30 minutes there, we hear this loud racket coming from camp like someone was throwing shit around. That same link scream was coming from the direction of our camp. And as soon as that one scream went up, a second one started from behind the berm. We both flip around and start looking at the berm while glancing back to the camp. We start seeing something moving just over the other side. This weird looking head kept popping up and down. It was a dark grey head shaped like fucking Patrick Stars. We only saw what we thought was the forehead and up. Before we could make it out, this fucking boulder, no fucking joke, bigger than me at the time, comes flying over and lands right in front of me and my grandfather. Of course, we fucking bolt back to camp. 
When we get there, we find that all our gear is trashed. The tent had shreds in it, our coolers were thrown everywhere, and our packs torn open. We heard the damn scream again, and started running. We ran, and ran, and ran, until I fucking puked. All the while, we would hear whoops and the screams from far off behind us. When we made it back to that A-shaped thing, the trees were snapped in half and thrown to the side. We finally made it back to my grandfather's truck and drove the fuck out of there, never going back there again. I don't want to know what it was, and frankly, I don't care. I'm just glad I got out of there. I was on a four-day canoeing trip with friends in a remote part of the southeastern United States, back when I was a young teen. We were up late, built a bonfire, and goofed off as young boys do. I'm sure we were making a lot of noise. Eventually the fire died down to coals, and we were just sitting around talking when we heard a distant high-pitched scream. It freaked us out for a little but eventually we forgot about it and just went back to talking. A while later, one of my friends pointed to the opposite banks of the river and says, Guys, what is that? We looked, and standing there in the trees was a huge silhouette of some figure watching us. It was faint, but it was illuminated by the full moon, and it was huge. We just kind of stared at it in shock for a moment before backing away. We went to get our friend's dad and some flashlights. He was intent on showing us there was nothing there. We got back to the spot, and it was still there. We shone our flashlights on it, but it wasn't enough to get a better look. But the thing's eyes shone red with the reflection of the flashlight. We watched it watching us for a bit and it walked along the embankment, then walked back and disappeared into the woods. That was more than a decade ago, and we rarely talk about it, and we were all pretty freaked out. I am a Canadian girl who has native and Aboriginal blood in her. I am from the West Coast, and most of my family believes in Bigfoot or Sasquatch, as you may call him. I always think of things to rationalize with this story, but even to this day it scares me a little bit. Was it a bear? I'm not sure. My family and I had to go up island to the reserve because of this thing called tribal journeys, which is basically just to cleanse people of their bad habits in canoes all the way back to the reserve they originate from. My siblings, grandmother and I, stayed with my grandma's sister as my mum was taking part in the canoe trip. If you don't know, most reserves have dogs running wild and free all over the place, or it's just the one my family's from. Anyway, on the second night of us staying with my grandma, we were sitting in my cousin's room. She was a bit younger than me, and was 13 at the time. Then, all of a sudden, we heard one of the dogs outside start to flip out at the neighbor's house. It was running and was barking at the trees. We had a sliding door open as we sat on the floor talking about God knows what before we hear a huge snap and the dog whined. Naturally, whatever was outside frightened us. It was at this point that my sister, who was two years younger than me, was looking out the sliding door and being nosy. But I still remember her facial expression as she told my cousin and I to come look at this. When we did, my sister pointed at a spot by the trees. We watched as my sister was freaking out when we finally started noticing this thing. I just told them it was probably a wolf, but then the thing stood up and was standing about seven feet tall. I remember we all freaked out as the light reflected of its eyes. My grandma quickly came in, trying to find out why we were making so much noise, and we told our grandma what we saw. She scolded us for looking out the window and that we can never speak of it again. The thing is though, my grandma's backyard tree line is like a ditch that leads down to the ocean. So even if it was a bear, I don't think it would appear to be seven feet high at that angle on the ditch. My cousin's cat went missing that night, and my mum and my uncle found the cat's body all messed up by the tree line. 
I'm assuming it was a wolf or cougar, maybe even a bear. I just don't know what to think about this. The woods near where my father grew up have plenty of old abandoned houses scattered through them. I'm from the Hudson Valley, and anyone who lives around the area can confirm that the woods have old houses, or at the very least some foundations remaining within them. When he was younger, he and everyone else would basically climb up this mountain to an abandoned house. He said it had a lot of old black and white nudes, but a lot of kids would go up to smoke and hang out, and things were smashed. Part of the trip up the mountain basically involved climbing up a cliff, just a flat rock surface that you had to scale. This was also his usual way down, so one night he went up alone, and was working his way down. Night was settling in, and he was lowering himself down to the drop, and he felt an odd presence, and glanced towards where he had just been standing. Basically, what he saw was a quick glance, because whatever it was just made him climb down the mountain and run home. He described it as very tall, lumbering above him and covered in hair. And it most certainly wasn't a bear. Whenever he tells this story, he always trembles just remembering it. First of all, I don't believe in the supernatural, per se. That is, phenomena unexplainable through the laws of nature. And I doubt aliens have ever contacted our planet. That said, here goes my story. I was a Peace Corp volunteer in my younger years. It was a great experience, and any young college grad in the US who was interested, I encouraged to follow through and apply. One of the best decisions I ever made. Anyway, I was posted in Southern Africa, into a small village in the more or less center of the Kalahari Desert. They call it there, the Kagalgadi. Out there in the bushveld, it was easy to feel really isolated. There were no Americans in the village I lived in and the only English speakers really were my teacher colleagues at the junior high. I had learned the national language more or less pretty well from the 14 weeks of training, but the dialect of my post was such that it wasn't easily understandable. Think as if you learn standard American English, then move into the Appalachian Hills. That kind of difference. The Kalahari Desert isn't a true desert in the sense that it's not this rolling wasteland of sand like the Sahel or the Sahara or the vast deserts in bordering Namibia. The Kalahari has trees, shepherd trees, thorny bushes, short hard barked rough trees that can survive without rain for long periods. I mention this for what comes later. Anyway, I'm sort of given to melancholy if I have too much time on my hands. This is just my character. So in those days, I would sometimes move a sitting room chair from my little school provided house out into my yard in the evening and look at the stars. The stars were too numerous to believe. Out there removed from any nearby city, no electric lights, as the school compound diesel power generator was shut off around 8. So one night, I was sitting there sort of basking in my introvertedness, half hoping someone will happen by and join me, and something catches my eye out in the bush. The bush was usually just a dark mass. It began several hundred yards out from my house, which as I say was on the school compound. The land for the school had long ago been cleared of trees, but right where they stopped clearing, the wild began again. Nothing was ever out there. I saw big snakes from time to time. Since they were technically on school grounds, I always killed them with a shovel. The local folk freaked out at snakes. Other than that, the fauna kept clear of us, and the most troublesome creature was scorpions, and my nemesis, the camel spider, that ran around in the late afternoon and evening. My point here is that I wasn't used to seeing movement out in the bush, and what was even stranger was that this thing seemed to be glowing, like fire, but it was moving very fast and steady, not like someone running with a burning torch or something, but like a crackly, fiery object about as big as a campfire, but traveling at speed at about chest level, obscured now and then by an intervening tree. Suddenly, very alert, I watched it for as long as it was visible, 
The urge to tell someone was of course great, but as I say, there was simply no one else around. My reporting of this would be the next day. After I had slept the night, sort of forgetting about it, I mentioned off-handedly what I had seen to my neighbour. A woman home economics teacher, maybe a year or two older than I, who went to bed early. She was a native for lack of a better word, African though not from this village. She considered the locals to be rather simple hicks, but she became very quiet when I told the story, as if I were telling her something unseemly or thrown open a door onto an embarrassing sight. It was clear that she wanted me to shut up. After a moment and what seemed like considerable effort, she told me this was how witches travelled. She spoke English and used the English word witch, and that it was considered an ill omen to see. Around the same month, me and the other teachers hooked up the school TV and VHS to a battery and watched a Salone film, Cobra, I think. And while we were there at the school, there was a freak rainstorm with thunder and lightning. When the video finished and we emerged to go home, someone was running up to us calling my name. Lightning had struck my house, tearing part of the roof off and sending a sheet of corrugated metal into my bed. Anyway. I got lucky. It was very weird though. I was staying in a cabin on the border of Pennsylvania and Maryland in the mountains. One day we were snowed in, and when you're snowed in up there you're stuck. Now there are plenty of bears and deer up there. We keep salt licks, corn, and all other kinds of stuff around. Not to hunt, but just to feed them. Well, I walk by the back window, which is over the underground garage, where we keep our snowmobiles and the four-wheelers. I see this big brownish looking thing in the woods, probably 50 feet away from the cabin, just sitting in the snow. I was shocked because I'd never really seen a bear there, but heard some stories about them being around. So I ran to get my mum and show her. As we walked back to the window, the damn thing stood up. And I don't mean like a bear. I mean big. Tall man standing up. It just turned around and walked with a huge stride. It took off into the woods. We stood there shocked. What the hell was that? My uncle just casually says, Oh, that's Sasquatch. He's a celebrity around here. I don't know if he was just trying to make us feel better by diffusing the situation with comedy. But after that, I never went into those woods alone again. What convinced me was, I saw it happen, and my cousin saw it with me. We were cruising through some rural areas in my cousin's car, I want to say 1 to 2 am. We weren't smoking or drinking, just having a nice cruise. We went on this road that went through some heavy woods, but we've done this before so we had no fears. It was dark of course, no moon, with just a slight sprinkle of rain. We were coming to this part in the woods where there was a street light, but it was an old light which was dimming out. There used to be an old building there, but it was torn down, and the light stayed up there for a few years. Mind you, this was very rural and no one lived nearby for maybe 20 miles, so it was extremely rare you pass another car, let alone another person at this time. Didn't help that the locals said, stay out of the woods at night. I was just looking out the window at the woods, when we were just coming up to that light. Next thing I know, the car does a movie turn, like stomp the brakes and does a 180, and fucking burn rubber the other way. I get weirded out and look back through the car. I see the road illuminated by the streetlight, and see this massive black figure beside the road. It takes one step and it's in the middle of the road, another step and it's already on the other side. Immediately I look forward, scared out of my mind, look at my cousin and see the intense fear on his face. We don't say a word to each other and he drops me off. I stay up till sunrise and finally go to sleep. Funny. Now that I think about it, we never talked about it once. 
not after it happened. But yeah, we saw Bigfoot, as do the locals who tell similar stories. I spend a lot of time camping on the beach, in Yosemite, and all over California really. But one particular Friday night, my friends and I decided to camp in the woods near Hicks Road. It's a notorious road for fatal car accidents, squatters in abandoned homes, and the like. This is about our third time camping up there. The last few times we heard some freaky noises, but nothing awful. So we pitch a tent in a small clearing and plow through a Taco 12 pack before we crash out. I fell asleep no problem, and wake up to the sound of what seems like people arguing outside my tent. It was 4.30 in the morning, and I stand up slowly and peek out into the darkness, and see a massive black mass moving, looking through the other tent windows. I see there's probably close to six or seven of them, they are absolutely huge and lumbering. I sat down in complete and utter silence for around 45 minutes, whilst I heard those behemoths around the tent. They were so close I could hear them brushing the fabric. Eventually they left, and when the sun came up,